Hi guys, welcome to Nerd Bison. This is going to be my spoiler review for Season 6, Episode 8 of Game of Thrones. Of course, there will be spoilers throughout, so make sure you go and see the episode before you check out my review. We begin the episode with Arya, uh, obviously she's still wounded. She goes and sees what I assume she probably would. She went to the actress, Lady Crane, and uh, gets stitched up by her, Milk of the Poppy, that kind of stuff. Uh, which kind of makes me realise that last episode she was as stupid as it looked there, where she was completely caught off guard by an old woman that was clearly the waif and got stabbed. I thought there'd be a little bit more smartness there, or some kind of layer, but no, she was a little, just a little bit careless there. Hound, what, what an entrance to the next episode, just these guys fucking about and from the distance you see him walking up, chopped off the heads, guts them, blah blah blah, and he just, at the last minute he's got that guy on the floor which is like, you're shit at dying, and then bang, kills him, brilliant. One thing I didn't expect was uh, Varys, he's left uh, Tyrion to go on an expedition of his own. Um, I don't know what it entails, it could be to do with what that priestess, what she said to him, maybe he needs to go and find himself or find something, you know what I mean? It's probably something to do with that, I assume. It's going to suck not having those two together, because the chemistry between these two actors is brilliant, and it's just a shame that they're not together. Cersei with the I choose violence line. Brilliant, we've seen it in the trailers, it comes to fruition, but not in the way I thought it was going to. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a bloodbath, Mountain takes on all these guys, but no, he takes on one of them, stabs him in, gets him in the chest, does nothing, then he knocks him to the side and gets his head and literally pulls it clean off, which is fucking awesome, but I expected him to go against the rest of them, but no, didn't even have to draw his sword, which is so cool. Um, the Blackfish and that entire fight, Jamie and all that kind of stuff, that kind of comes to a little bit more fruition this episode. You've got Brienne that arrives with Pod and then she's talking to Jamie about trying to get a peaceful transition and go and talk to the Blackfish, but he won't because he's too stubborn, blah blah blah. You've got her obviously talking to the Blackfish as well, again, he's too stubborn, he won't have any of it, and she said to Jamie, fine, you know, if I have to, I will fight for Sansa, not for you, so if I have to fight you and kill you, then I will, but it was, you know, it was an absolute remorse, she didn't want to do it and everything, they had the little moment with the Oath Keeper sword, they said, keep it, it's always been yours, It's because it's, it's really difficult for these characters, they definitely like each other, they, they respect each other, but they find themselves on the opposite side of the wall, which is really difficult. Tommen and the High Sparrow hit yet another ball out of the park for Cersei. I mean, it's just not looking good for this girl. They ban trial by combat. I mean, of all the things. I mean, they done it. They set, he sat him down on the Iron Throne. Everyone's around. Massive announcement. She's standing there with the mountain behind him, and then they just announce it that it's no longer do it. They're no longer having it anymore. They're doing away with it because it's some kind of barbaric thing of the past, and they won't do it anymore. Which makes the mountain completely useless to her now. God, I feel, I'm actually starting to feel sorry for Cersei. I thought he'd never say this, because I hated her so much in the last seasons. But this season's really spinning a bit on his head, and I feel sorry for her. She's trapped. She's got no way out. Back with Marine as well. You've got Tyrion and the other two having a little bit of jokes and everything, drinking wine, and then suddenly the ships come back, the masters are coming back, and then they attack as well. And they don't fuck about. They're attacking straight away, laying siege to Marine. And then they're at the top, and then the two is going, I admit I was wrong, blah, blah, blah. They start de debating and arguing at the top of the spire thing. Then you hear a clunk on the top, and you think it might could be, you know, obviously part of the war. Straight away, I knew, no, 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 no. And it was definitely Drogon, landed down, Daenerys straight through the door, and there she is, she's back in Marine. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes next week. Now that she's back, and I'm pretty sure her army will not be too far behind. Back with Jamie and all the other guys, he talks to Edmure uh, while he's captive and basically just saying if I have to I'll kill everybody to get back to Cersei, yeah, which we, you know, we saw in trailers, and he, he convinces everyone to go to the Blackfish in the castle, lay down their weapons, because he's still the Lord and he's still in charge, he lay, gets to lay down the weapons, the Lannisters pile in, and then he gets to get them put in chains and apparently he, um, at the end of it he ends up getting killed. He lets Brian and Pod go in, this, in the little boat and everything, he goes off to fight, but you don't see him die. You just hear from another guard to, to Jamie just saying we found him, he's dead. And I would have liked to see him die at least, let him die the way he wants to, you know, with a sword in his hand and whatnot, but you know, apparently he's just he's just dead. Just as Brian and Potter getting away in the boat, Jamie's standing there and he can see them from a distance. Then you've got Brian and turns around and waves and he waves and then that's it. I mean it's a really nice moment because he could have got the guards. He could have gotten to stop her, but no, he just let her go, and it's really good that that, that friendship and that respect is still there. I, it's, it's really difficult to place Jamie in the minute. He he's a horrible person, but he's also got that respect, and he's a good person. This is the brilliant thing about George R. R. Martin. He's able to construct so much characterization in one person, and you don't know where to go with them. He does. They do it with Cersei. They do it with him. They do it with so many other characters. It's just. Uh, it's really an interesting way of doing things. It's proven that not everybody is solely evil or solely good. They have good and bad between them. 
the hound again. He 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 finds the other guys from the Brotherhood that that defected and killed all the villagers and whatnot. And Ian McShane's character. They're about to be hung by the rest of the Brotherhood. That's right. All those other guys are back as well. Mister Eye Patch. Can't remember his freaking name. They have a little bit of a con conversation, a little bit of an altercation, and then he ends up kicking the rock under from underneath them, lets them hang and die. Then he has a bit more of a conversation with the Brotherhood around a campfire. Uh, Boy takes a piss as well. I think we saw the hound's junk. Why? Why did we need to see that? It's a quick shot. Oh, no, why? Why would we see that? Uh, but they have the conversation about, you know, there's a bigger deal here, we need that kind of stuff. So, potentially the Hound's found himself going with the Brotherhood. It's not 100%, but it looks like it might be that way. Finally, the last bit of the episode is with Arya this week. She's still recovering. Uh, Lady Crane comes out to get her some more milk of the puppy, and who should appear but the Waif? And yes, Crane is dead. She's been killed completely. <laughs> looks like she was like, put through a chair. To be honest, then you've got a massive chasing with the wave chasing Arya through the stores, knocking everything over, falling down, all this kind of stuff. While she's still a little bit injured, then she chased it all the way back, and very cleverly, actually. I thought she was being quite stupid, but then, because obviously, with what happened la earlier and last week, that Arya just being really stupid, leaving her blood trails all over the walls and everything. But no, she was dragging her down and guiding her into this area where she has needle. And the great thing about it is that as soon as she closed the door and everything, and then she stands up with needle and she goes, That's not going to help you. Then you think she's going to swing for it, and then she just cuts the candle off and that's it, it goes to black and this is brilliant because you don't see the fight but you know she can handle herself because when she was blind and training you know she can handle herself by not being able to see anything but the wave can't and that is where she has the advantage and that's a really awesome thing to lead into the next moment. Yeah, that moment you just see Jack and Agar walk and you see these drips of blood going through and then goes through the doors into where all the faces people are and the plinths and everything and it goes pans up and there is the wave's face right there dripping with blood that's right Arya's managed to kill her because I was scared for a minute it might be the opposite way around Arya's right behind him pointing needle saying you told her to kill me he goes yes so now the girl is truly you no know, one and he goes, goes no I am Arya Stark of Winterfell and I am going home and then that's it she buggers off and that's the end of the episode it's cool, I like it because she's going home and I'm hoping she'll see Sansa and Jon and everything will be awesome because the character between Jon and her just is, is brilliant, it's really, really awesome. But I feel like maybe this whole black and white thing, faceless person, has been for nothing. I hope not, I hope it's there's, there's another story to be told or there's a reason why or this helps her in some way. But at the moment it seems like it's it's all been for nothing. She's built it up then she's going, you know what, fuck it, I'm done and I'm off. And it just, ugh, I don't know, I have to see what happens. Overall I think episode 8 was good. Not great, but good. It still has some uh, really cool moments in it, and uh, I think it's just I'm looking forward to next week so much now because episode nine, as we all know, is the big budget one, the one where a lot of shit happens. Then ten is the aftermath, so I cannot wait for next week. So that's what I thought of uh, episode eight of season six of Game of Thrones. What did you think about it? Let me know down in the comments or send me an email. You can also find me in the various social media: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and MoviePilot.com. Just type in Nerd Bites anywhere, and I'm sure you'll find me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my videos. And of course, keep it nerdy.